Well, hello there. My name is Kent Zeus. I'm the school director at Manitoba Theatre for Young People. And uh, this video series is uh, basically uh, a series of lessons, how to make different kinds of puppets. Well, we've had a few lessons where we've discovered how to make a sock puppet, a rod puppet with a hand on a stick. We've combined those two technologies to make a moving mouth puppet with a rod stick, which is a little bit like a Sesame Street style Muppet, you know, like Grover or Elmo. Um, We've also made a puppet with a box head and a glove for the hand, which is a little bit like Cookie Monster or Ernie from Sesame Street. And now we're going to do something a little different. Now we're going to do a puppet that's from more of a tradition of tabletop puppetry or what you might even call object puppetry. Now with object puppetry, you don't even make a puppet. You have an object that has character. So you might have a character like this. Ooh, ooh. Right? And you... you imbue these objects with life and you animate them and there's a whole tradition of puppetry there but there's also using toys and objects puppets that look like toys to tell a story all right we're going to do a simple robot puppet and it's going to be inspired by a story i created called robbie and ardo and you can see a picture right there this is from a story called cats away um robbie's a, just a child the cat is on the top of ardo the robot and the robot there is created out of objects that Robbie found in the garbage. There's an old toaster, there's a vacuum cleaner, hoses, vacuum cleaner hoses are the arms, there's bicycle wheels attached to a little dresser drawer for the lower body. And this this robot magically comes to life in the story. Well, we're gonna create such a robot and it's gonna be operated with a rod and it's gonna have real wheels that turn and it's gonna be really easy to animate it but you do it on a tabletop or on a flat surface rather than in the air in front of a camera or through the window of a puppet stage. All right, so let's just take a look at the kind of tools you'll need for this one too, because the tools are a little bit interesting as well. All right, here we go. All right, here we are in my workbench corner. Uh, it's kind of covered with art supplies and tools, but right here we have the Black & Decker Variable Speed Drill Press. If you have a drill press like this, you're gonna find this really um, a useful tool and you at least need a drill to do this puppet. Also, if you've got a selection of screwdrivers, you're going to need a screwdriver. We're going to teach kids how to use a screwdriver and drive in screws. All right, and we'll check the toolbox. Maybe you've got some tools in there that you need. And if you're like me, you have one of these. It's a little dresser drawer with little things in it. And now I have a place to put all the paper clips that I find in the house. And I've got a place for long screws and a place for flat screws. And I start to put the miscellaneous tools in these. So if you dig into this, maybe you've got something that you need in here. Okay, let's look at some more of the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a block of wood. And we're going to drill some holes in this block of wood using the drill press. So you can see I put three holes on that side, one on that top. This is for the back, slightly larger hole. All right, you're going to need to drill some holes. You're going to need two sizes of drill bit. The smaller one is going to be used to drill the holes in the wood block. All right, we want screws to fit in tightly there. But the larger one is going to be to drill holes. You might have wooden beads. I'll show you this in a second. You need that hole to be bigger so that the screw goes right through. And if you're going to use jar lids for wheels for this puppet, you need bigger holes. So some of the tools you need. Let's say you look through your drawers and you found a drawer full of screws. We want basically one size because we want to work with one screwdriver. So you're going to give them a dish of screws and a screwdriver to use. All right, I already showed you these. These are jar lids and I used the drill press to drill a hole in the exact center. Along with the wood block, we're gonna also use some paint. Keep it simple. Give them two colors of paint that look good together. So we got yellow, blue, mixed together, green. Unless you love brown, you can add more colors. But uh, once the paint mixing gets going, you're gonna see every combination possible. All right, another drawer might have some odds and ends. These are furniture anchors. We're gonna use those for the eyes today. And if you have a collection of beads, wooden beads, that's what I'm going to use today as well. And I've created this dish of some of the supplies that I'm planning to use. A Pokemon card might be useful. Some feathers, sure. I've got these clips, these butterfly clips used in the office. I love these things. We're going to use those. Um, I've got some little game tiles. You know, I found a couple of old games at an old uh, secondhand store. I picked up the, this because I thought the tiles were neat. That's got the number 32 on it. Here's one that's got a couple of dots on it. I don't know what game those are from. I just got them. And then a few little uh, craft popsicle sticks. All right, these happen to be orange. 
picked up a couple of orange ones. So we've got a miscellaneous grouping of beads. The beads are neat because they have a hole big enough to hold those screws. All right, so I, have, I got lucky with these beads. But you can prepare your own by buying little wooden blocks and drilling holes in them with your drill press. Or if you have a lot of scrap wood around, then it's really useful. And we're gonna need a bamboo skewer. We want the skewer to fit into one of the holes in the back. So a slightly larger hole there with the skewer, we're gonna glue that in place with wood glue. All right, a couple of paint brushes. I think we're ready to start. Here we go. First thing we're gonna do is give this a little bit of a paint job. Right, got some blue. Looks like that's the last of my blue and a little bit of yellow. There we go. I'm just going to mix those together as much as we like. Okay, we're back and uh, we've painted the block and we've let it dry and now we're just going to assemble it and this is actually going to go pretty quickly so uh, we may speed up the camera a little bit here but just take a look we've got our screws and our wooden block with the holes drilled in it and our little uh, jar lids with the hole drilled in the middle all right and we're going to put together this uh, this beautiful little puppet okay so we'll take a screw put it through the hole oh we'll do it this way now with these lids, I put some red electrical tape on the ends because I felt like they clattered too much on the ground and I wanted a little more grip and also some color. I spread out a strip of electrical tape, red electrical tape right here on the metal of a ruler, which is right here. I'm not gonna do it for you. I just spread it out there and I used an X-Acto knife to cut it down the middle and I ended up with these thin strips of electrical tape which I wrapped around the edges of this. So if you're wondering why that's red instead of yellow, that's why. You don't have to do that. I just wanted it to have a nicer finish and some color. All right, we're gonna screw in the wheel. Now this is the fun of letting kids do this, all right? The screw is gonna fit. It's gonna be an empowering rather than a frustrating experience. They have a screwdriver that fits and you don't even have to do it all the way in because it actually looks really good if the wheel tilts a little bit like this. A little more like a drawn character. If you have a lot of pieces for your child to choose from, they can create a wide variety of puppet characters here. You just need to have enough holes drilled in your block of wood and um, enough screws and uh, beads and wood blocks for them to screw in. All right, so there we have the rolling part of our puppet. A little tighter, perhaps. We want those wheels to spin freely, and if they rattle around a little bit, that's okay, as long as they roll. Let's try a screw in the top. We'll make it, give it a little block head. There's our head piece right there. Okay, and now we're gonna do something that I think is kind of interesting. We're gonna take a screw and a bead, and I think I might have a couple of orange beads here, do I? No, let's we'll take a regular white bead, but we'll put this piece in it. So we're gonna screw a little butterfly clip. I love these clips. Into the side. And your child will get their own ideas. I like the butterfly clip idea uh, because we're gonna clip something into it and we're gonna be able to hold an object. Make it nice and snug. It's a bit of an arm, but it also can hold something. All right, we'll do the same on the other side. Okay, now just for fun, I've got a couple of short screws here, which I'm gonna put into that spot. There's no limit to how many holes you can put in your puppet character and how many screws you can let your kids put into there. Sometimes just putting a screw into the wood is exciting because it creates this interesting shape on the wood and it gives your child practice using the screwdriver and the screws. So this is a great project for that. All right, these are the main tools of this project. This is the main purpose. Now finishing touches can be done with glue. They're perhaps a little bit less exciting, but we're gonna do some finishing touches with glue. And we're also gonna cut out a shape from this card. 
Now I was thinking a great shape would be a flaming sword. So I'm going to use my favorite scissors to cut a flaming sword out of this thing. We'll cut it at a bit of an angle here. It's not perfect because, well, I didn't draw it or measure it, but there was a sword. So we're going to give this puppet a sword to hold. There you go. See, he's got his flaming sword. Here, let's reverse it so that the red part shows. Look at that. You see that? Flaming sword. There we have it. You can move that hand around a little bit. Okay, now, we're going to use some of our pieces here. We've got some interesting tiles here. These are from an old game. All right, we've got some of these things, and we've got some of these. So I have an idea to use some Elmer's glue. I'm almost out, so I'm going to use a paintbrush to gather the glue. All right, so I've got some glue on the end. This is really good glue. It holds wood together. I don't use it for carpentry projects that much, but for a craft project, I do like it. So we'll put some glue on the end here. Usually put a bit of glue on the surface as well. Let it sit for a minute. We're gonna put some uh, a yellow block on there, right in the middle of that surface. Here, we'll, we're just gonna glue up the whole front of this guy. Yellow block, we'll put some numbers and some tiles on there. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna arrange this like that, right near the top. Arrange this on the side just for some visual graphic interest. Not sure exactly what we're trying to represent with these things, but it's going to create just a little bit of um, visual variety. And this one, we'll just put the number 32. It's a good number. And there we have it. Just a graphically interesting front. It's got a, it looks a little strange perhaps. Now we're gonna use these things, these furniture anchors I've been talking about. We used them for the teeth of one of our other puppets. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of this glue on the sides here. And I still have enough glue for my last thing on there. So we're going to put these anchors onto the sides like eyes. Let's see how those hold. Well, we're going to do a little more glue on the front. Give him a number seven on his face. feeling it'll all hold quite nicely. And now for the very last thing, we're gonna take this skewer, I'm gonna put some glue into that hole on the back, put some glue in that hole, put some glue on the end of the skewer, and I'm gonna push the skewer into the hole. We're gonna let him dry and we'll try him out in a shot tomorrow. There you have it, you have this puppet that you need out of the main tools, the main point of this puppet is to use the screwdriver and the screws for a young child and create an interesting toy to play with. And it's a puppet on a stick that can be used in a puppet show on a table. All right, thanks very much. Enjoy, happy creating.